How you doing? Hello, 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 hello. Today is going to be very good. And I'm anticipating a lot of foolishness. <laughs> good afternoon. But I'm 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 here for the shenanigans. So today is gonna be a you gonna it's gonna be a two for one block special. I'm just telling you right now. Cause I'm gonna teach something that is very important, which is about witchcraft. All right. So I know that there's going to be a lot of foolishness. All right. And I'm just going to I'm just going to lay it out because a lot of you all you comment too much while I'm on here. You say too much. Um, great afternoon, Miss Genesis and family. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope all is well with all of you. I hope all is well. So I'm just going to say that in the beginning. Um, good afternoon, because I, I want to teach this. I really want to teach this, all right? And this is a message that has to be um, given. I'm actually going to make some TikToks about this as well, all right? Good afternoon to everybody. Um, it's, this is going to be very, very powerful. It's not that I'm against people commenting. It's just that there's so many people that comment so much unnecessary things. Um, if something that I says, you don't struggle with it, you don't need to comment that. You don't need to tell me that that's not your struggle. Go ahead and give your testimony. I, um, yeah. Um, so I just want to say that a lot is a lot of unnecessary conversating. It is. And I know that you're not on here for the right reasons if you're constantly commenting. All right. Good afternoon. Because I'm going to give this message. This message. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. It's, this is a very important message. Very important message. All right. Good afternoon. Um, and it's basically going to give you revelation concerning defeating witchcraft. All right. That is why I'm on here. Defeating witchcraft. That's what this is about. Um, and I'm also going to give you all some context um, concerning witchcraft. All right. Now, just because some of this stuff you all struggle with does not mean that you are having a witchcraft attack. Um, so you said testimony sold on June 30th. Daughter received new job paying twice. Um, amen. Amen. Amen, Gerald. That's good. Amen. Thank you for sharing. I'm just curious. What may, why did it take you a month to give your testimony? Just out of curiosity. I'm not trolling. I just, I'm just curious because we, we basically, this August 1st. Why did it take so long? Um, how are you, Alicia? How are you doing? Um, I'm just curious. Because I'm the reason why I'm saying this is because this morning when I was in prayer, um, you said also wife was able to work less hours for the summer and make more. Wow, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Um, here's why I'm 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 saying that because I was praying this morning. God was telling me that there's a lot of people that still have not given me their testimonies. I don't know why. I find it strange. I really do. So there's a lot of people who have not given testimonies. You know what else I wanted to speak on too? Last week when I was on here, um, last week when I was on here, I was speaking, good afternoon, Ebony. I was speaking about, um, that was the incident that happened on here. So there was, there was an incident that happened where I was correcting somebody who was commenting on, um, on TikTok and I was correcting them. So there were other people that were actually defending this person. And so it's so funny to me because, um, she got so offended at me that she went on my Instagram with this long thread trying to correct me now she was coming against me for me correcting somebody else telling me i'm an error and she took it that far to to, to to my instagram that you got that type of offense in your heart that you want to defend somebody that you don't even know 
Okay, and so I find it to be so weird that some of you got so much hatred towards me that that that's what you do. You try to find fault in 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 anything that I say and do. Let me tell you something. There is not a person, not a leader, anybody that do ministry that does everything correct. Number one, your thoughts are wicked. So there is not enough works that you can do for God to make him love you any different or any less. And that's what many of you don't understand that God's grace is sufficient and his mercy is always, it's always new. God has a lot of mercy for me. God is back in every single thing that I do. And that is why the fruit in my ministry speaks for himself. So if you want to fall fan me and don't like the way I say certain things, I don't care. Moving forward, I also want you all to stop telling me how offended you were at me. I don't want to hear that anymore. I don't. I'm, I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing you all tell me you're offended at the truth. I'm tired of hearing about I couldn't stomach your delivery in the beginning. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. I just want to tell you that. So keep it to yourself. You do not need to tell me that you were so offended at me. I'm tired of seeing those comments. I'm not lying because it doesn't make sense. The only reason why I'm saying this is because um, a lot of times, yeah, it's very disrespectful, disrespectful, very disrespectful. And it also goes to show you that a lot of the issues that you're having is eternal. Okay. Because everything that I teach and preach and I say, um, Everything that I teach and preach and say is coming straight from the Holy Spirit. Let me just say that. So if you want to give me a testimony, please don't start your testimony off by saying I was so offended at you. I don't care. I, I did you no wrong. I'm doing nothing but telling you the truth. I'm doing nothing but telling you what your illegitimate leaders won't tell you. They want you to depend on them. I'm teaching you need to depend on God. I'm totally different. I'm not cut from the same cloth for the people that you listen to. You all cannot box me into nothing. Okay? You can't. You can't box me into anything. Don't compare me to people that do ministry. Don't ever do it. Because you're going to set yourself up for failure. That's all I want to say. Okay? And so, and that, I just want to put that out there. Yes, my Instagram is going to continue to flourish. I'm going to continue to post. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do on there because I can reach people in different ways. Maybe you can't, but I can. I know how to reach people in a different way. Okay, I'm a very practical person. I'm not real religious when I talk to people. I don't even do all that. I don't act deep and goofy when I meet people. I don't. I think it's disgusting. All right. And it does not cause for that because your presence will be made known around people. People can see the light on me. Literally. I hear it all the time. All right. And so I just want to say that to many of you. Stop trying to watch me and fault find and pull the speck out your eye. That's what you do. That's that's what I would love for you to do. Okay. And you don't need to tell me about your testimony. The people of God probably need to hear your testimony. Um, just so we know. If if your testimony is so powerful, then maybe you should be doing ministry. Maybe your objective should be to get with God and see what you can do. If God brought you out of witchcraft and it'll blow my mind, which I know it won't, um, it will probably blow other people's mind. Angie, give your testimony. Let God use you in this hour in Jesus' name. Because many of you let everybody use you except for God. Yeah, you got to be deeper than the testimony. We got to be deeper than the testimony. If God brought you out, it's for you to win souls in Jesus name. It's for you to evangelize, not to get on people platform and get them a testimony. Your testimony should be a testament of how good God is. Then ask God, what do you want me to do next? That's how that works. All right. So um, somebody said they have a testimony. So give it to me real quick so I can screenshot it. And then I'm going to, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to give you all some um, some really good revelation. Can I give you my recent? Yes, definitely. Definitely, Stephanie. Give me your testimony. Give me your testimony. We. I just plead the blood of Jesus over this live. I cancel all attacks. Um, hold on. Let me remove this person. 
I have sown uh, into your ministry a couple of times and received a blessing on Friday of $2,500. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's a real testimony right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow i don't even know what to say um i got some very powerful testimonies on my youtube this weekend i was i was in shock at the stuff people were saying i just haven't posted it yet um but thank you angie for sharing that is absolutely amazing miss genesis my extended testimony i purchased a car this weekend you got an even lower interest rate wow 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 the favor of god the favor of god the favor of god that is I don't even know what to say. Somebody else said they had a testimony. Um, so I just wait until you share it. I think I, I I thought somebody else had a testimony. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me not waste no time because uh, I, I really kind of got a lot to say. Oh, you did. Okay, Stephanie. God revealed to me that now I'm in a place to hear and not to be offended in what he told to me. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's really good. So basically, Stephanie, God had to work on your heart. That's basically what it is. So you have to have a... So this is another thing too. With a, so I'm glad you said this because um, in order for people to receive me, you got to have the right heart posture, right? So for an example, if you are a woman, you're very intimidated by other women you um you got mommy issues even daddy issues you got issues with somebody with any type of authority and leadership somebody that really is on fire for god um and things of that sort right so you gotta think about something if you got a poor heart if you struggle with jealousy if you have all this stuff in your heart you going you gonna despise me you're going to despise me. You're going to dislike me. Um, and so God has been having me to mentor one person, um, as I think I've mentioned that, right? Um, and so you say, I just sold in you this morning. God told me to sow more than what I sold. I just got an email. You got an email from where? From a job or something? Um, so... You're, okay, so I was, I'm basically mentoring one person, all right? And so this one person has a lot of issues, okay? And hold on one second. This one person has a lot of issues, all right? And this person, I had to really correct this morning. Now, this person will comment and she'll say under my comments, she'll be like, I love you. You know what God told me this morning? He said, when she tells me she loves me, she has a lot of deceit in her heart. Um, and so, so basically that's the testimony, Tareen. That's amazing. Um, you said it was paid for? Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so um, I told her. I said, when you tell me you love me, God told me that it's deceit in your heart. She agreed that I wasn't lying. She was like, I received that. I know you will. And I told her, I said, you need to fix your heart because this ain't going to work. I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to mentor you. God also told me she's very lazy. All of the instructions that I gave her, she doesn't do. So a lot of you all, you want me to mentor you. It, I'm telling you the mentorship not going to last because I'm not going to play with you. I want you to know that you grown. Y'all, y'all do everything under the sun. You get high. You, you do all kind of stuff. Got your legs gapped open. You do everything, but give your life to Christ. And so mentoring with me is not going to work. Mentoring with me is not going to work. This is why I'm very selective on who I'm going to work with because she's one foot in and one foot out. I'm not going to play at all. And I had given her, I've given her like two warnings. So I'm done with the warnings. Next, I'm just going to move on. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to play. I do not play. I'm very consistent with everything that I do. If I'm going to do something for God, I'm going to do it with excellence. I'm going to do it with integrity. Please don't ask me, can you mentor me? Please stop. I just said I'm only doing one person right now. 
okay i'm going to i'm going to have a full mentorship for a select group of people um and that is something that i'm going to do in the future i kind of hate that i even mention it because i'm not doing anything prematurely if god is not telling me to do that i won't do it okay so please stop asking me that i am going to have a mentorship for a group of people definitely and i am going to announce it and all of that okay i'm just saying right now is not the time okay and there's one reason why all right and i'm not going to go into that um so i just wanted to say that you have to have a level of integrity when you are dealing with somebody like me because i'm gonna go to god about everything about you so if you mentor with me and i give you instructions and then god tell me you're not doing what you're supposed to do i'm gonna tell you about that you see what I'm saying? I It's like people think I'm for play. I'm not for play. No, I really do have a relationship with God. No, I really do pray about everything. Literally. I think y'all think I'm joking when I say that. <laughs> I don't. That's why I said a lot of people get so offended. You want to follow me on social media. Then you lying saying, oh, it was a mistake and all of that. No, offense got root in your heart. You say you apologize for the delay okay yeah i mean yeah you could have testified a lot quicker but i appreciate you for finally telling me it just goes into what god revealed to me this morning god told me that there's a lot of people that have not given their testimonies but thank you for telling me i appreciate it okay now i'm going to read proverbs chapter one um that's true mentorship one thousand percent one thousand percent one thousand percent um i don't like for people to play with my time I don't like for people to lie. You got to have integrity for me and God and respect because I don't care if you love me. I don't want to be loved. I want you to honor and respect me. Totally different. And God revealed that to me, that honor and respect is much higher than love because love is attached to a feeling that is totally different. That's why people get married and you think you're going to have these butterflies. You're not going to be in love every single time, every single day. That's not how that works. Okay, love is an action word. You can actually like, you can actually love a person and not like their personality. Message. So I don't want you to love me. I want you to keep that phoniness to yourself. But I, what you gonna have is you gonna have respect for me, and you're going to honor me because I demand it. Because I give the same in return. You see what I'm saying? I give the same in return. I don't play with people time. I don't disrespect people. Whatever God is telling me concerning you, I'm going to give it to you because I don't want any blood on my hand. If God tell me to tell you that you jealous, that you this and you that trust and believe you're going to get this work and I'm going to tell you about yourself and I'm going to move on about my day and crack jokes and have a, one, a wonderful rest of my day. But one thing I don't, I don't do, I do not play with God. Whatever God is saying about you, I'm going to tell you expeditiously. I don't bite my tongue. I don't have to. I don't need to go to prophetic school. I don't need none of that. All I need is the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit is telling me that you're jealous, I'm going to tell you, sis, fix that jealousy in your heart. In Jesus' name. So I'm going to give you all of some very powerful scriptures. Um... And the reason being is because I want you to understand what wisdom is. Wisdom warns. And I've read this before, but I feel the need to read this again. This is Proverbs chapter 1. I'm reading this from the Amplified Translation. I'm starting at verse 20. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She raises her voice in the markets. She calls out at the head of the noisy streets. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks her words. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks her word. How long, O oh naive ones, will you love being simple-minded and undiscerning? It says, will you love being simple-minded and undiscerning? How long will scoffers delight in scoffing? How long will fools hate knowledge? Do you know that the Proverbs say that you are a fool if you hate knowledge? Some of you are foolish to come against the things that I've told you. You are actually considered a fool, according to King Solomon. This is in the Bible. Message. If you will return and pay attention to my rebuke, behold, I, in parentheses, wisdom, will pour out my spirit upon you. Okay? Will pour out my spirit upon you. So, this is why I said 
that yeah this is very good this is very good and then it says i will make my words known to you because i called and you refused to answer listen to what happens when you refuse knowledge listen to this i stretched out my hand and no one has paid attention it says and you treated all my counsel as nothing and then it says i will not accept my reprimand i also will laugh at your disaster it's literally saying that he will laugh at your disaster. This is God speaking. He will laugh at your disaster. While y'all be running around here talking about, I just don't like your delivery. I don't like your delivery. I don't like what you're saying. I was so offended for three months, but I kept listening to you. Okay, that's great. God said he gonna laugh at you. I will mock when your dread and panic come. Did y'all just hear that? He said, I will mock and dread when your panic come. He basically going to make a, make a mockery out of you. When your dread and panic come like a storm and your disaster comes like a whirlwind. When anxiety and distress comes upon you as retribution. This is your payback for how you act. Did y'all just hear that? Did you catch that? Did you just catch that? It says when anxiety and distress come upon you as retribution. While y'all be running around here saying you don't like how I talk. You don't read the Bible. Do you honestly think? Do you think that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you think they was really just mad at Jesus because he performed a few miracles? Do you? Could you imagine how bold Jesus was? Could you imagine how bold he truly was if we was walking around with him that day? You can't even imagine. Everything is not written in the Bible, just so you aware. That's also in the Bible, too. There are a lot of things that are not recorded. That's in the Bible. It literally says that. Jesus did way more than what's in the Bible. We're talking about God. Could you imagine how, look at how bold he talked to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Look at the miracles that he performed on the Sabbath day. He came against them on the Sabbath day because, you know, they was big about all their traditions and all this religious stuff. He, he said, Jesus said, I'm a heal on the Sabbath. Jesus came for every single thing that they thought. This let me get this fool out of here. Um, and so I just want to say that to many of you. All the rules was bananas. I love what you just said. And, and it's impossible for us to follow the law. It is impossible for us to follow the law. Because if that were the case, then if you want to keep the Sabbath, I need to come to your backyard. You need to have rams, doves. You need to be sacrificing animals on a daily. You know how foolish you sound talking about keeping the Sabbath and, and trying to keep all these laws? You sound ridiculous. I digress. And did not choose the fear of the Lord that is obeying him with reverence and all fear respect. Block. Okay. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own wicked ways. Listen to what it says when you do not. Um, HDJS whatever your name is i basically just said that so there was no need for you to say we saved by faith not works i literally just said let me just mute you i just let me just mute you all right it says because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord that is obeying him with reverence and all feel respect they would not accept my counsel and they spurned all my rebuke therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own wicked ways this is why so many of you, I have given you these strong prophetic words and you get so offended, but then your life doesn't change. Nothing in your life changes. So it can't be me. Can't be the, I can't be the issue because do you realize that people are testifying every week? Let me, let me just mute her talking about Israelites. Anybody that come in here with any stupidity, talking about Hebrew Israelite, all that stuff, you just going to get blocked and muted. Do not come on my TikTok. I am not a Hebrew Israelite. Don't talk to me about how confused you is. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Okay? I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. I say this all the time. A lot of the men stop coming on my lives because I am not the one. 
Okay, I am a servant of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I don't care who don't like that word, Jesus. You are demonic if you think that that word does not hold weight in the realm of the spirit. Every single time demons come against me, I guarantee you, start yelling out all that foolishness that you yelling out and them demons going to laugh at you. They understand the blood of Jesus Christ and I'm going to stand on it. Every time I come on here, you ain't going, you not going to get me to turn my plow. You will never get me to turn my back and say nothing else. I don't want to hear nothing. It's Jesus Christ over here, period. All right. So therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own wicked ways and be satiated with the penalty of their own devices. That's what it says. When y'all get the opportunity, yeah, exactly. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what I'm going to stand on. That's what demons understand. Demons understand um, Jesus. Just so we clear, Jesus understands, I mean, the devils understand the blood of Jesus. Okay? They understand the blood. Let me remove this fool. All right. They, that's what they understand. All right. So the reason why I'm saying this is because um, I want you all to understand the importance um, when someone is speaking to you concerning your character, all this kind of stuff. Right. And the reason why I'm saying this is because there are so many times there are so many times that I have given people so much correction and they play so many games um, with me that a lot of them get very offended. They get very upset. They get very angry. You're getting angry at the truth. Just so we clear. The reason why I only use the word Jesus is because I've learned um, even the people that comment and say Yeshua and stuff like that. Right. Those people don't have no fruit in their life. Nobody is being blessed on the count of them or any of that. When you are sleeping and demons are attacking you, they understand the blood of Jesus. They will back off of you. They will get off of you. I have seen demons shrink when I start calling on the name of Jesus. It is very demonic what people are doing and want to sit up and say, oh, his name is Yeshua. I, I will tell you like to stop for real. Um, I will literally tell you to stop because number one, if you are having an attack in your dreams and you start pleading the blood of Jesus, the stuff is going to stop. I know people that seeing every day and they grandmama taught them, um, they grandmama taught them to call on the blood of Jesus. They don't even live their life for God, but I've heard many people say that they call on Jesus all the time in their dreams. Real talk, because that's the only name that matters. I'm not trying to hear anything that you're saying. When you call on the blood of Jesus and demons are attacking you, they, they back down. They back down. So all of this, his name is Yeshua. Get off my page, please, and go find you some business. I don't need no moderator. I don't know why you I don't need no moderator. Um, and let me tell you something. The warfare that I'm experiencing is only for distraction purposes only. That's what these people are trying to do. Okay, these people are trolls, literally. This stuff doesn't bother me. This used to bother me when I first started doing ministry. I, I don't care. I don't need no moderator, though. Trust me, I'm good. Yeah, it's just a demonic distraction. It's just to get me to get upset and stuff like that. Because they were trying to ban me for so long. And... <sighs> Yeah, that just don't work anymore. All right. Now, I'm going to read off some things that God revealed to me concerning um, just things that people are experiencing um, as a result of witchcraft. Now, this could be an extremely lengthy, long life. I don't want it to be too long. I don't want it to be too long, um, but I am going to I am going to this is going to be lengthy. This is going to be lengthy. You don't have to say that you hate the trolls. It shouldn't even affect you because if you paying attention, do you see how I've been teaching and preaching the word of God? I haven't, I haven't turned my plow. I'm good over here. So the trolls don't even matter. By the time you all even read the comments, I didn't already block them. I can multitask like crazy. 
Okay, they're not an issue. You they're only an issue if you make it an issue, right? By paying attention to the comments and all that kind of stuff. You shouldn't even care. You actually, if it bothers you, put your phone down to turn your earphones on. That's it. You feel me? Because they're not they're not important. They are literally not important. What they're trying to do is get an uh, um like get an emotion out of me. You know what I'm saying? So that they can try to say that I'm doing hateful stuff because that's what they were doing. Um, no, I don't, you don't tell me to turn my comments off, Shaquan. I'm not turning off anything. So no. All right. Now, um, or I don't know if you were saying you turn it. Yeah. Cause I'm not turning my comments off. Yeah. It's to get a reaction out of me and so that they can report me for hatred and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. Okay. So now I'm going to read to you some of the stuff that God revealed to me concerning just the just surface level, just witchcraft in general. Now. I'm going to speak on something. I'm actually going to speak on something that, um, I'm going to speak on this. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to speak on this is because I think it's important. Now, I don't know if you all watch boxing. I don't know if you all watch boxing, but there was a boxing match over the weekend with a guy by the name of Terrence Crawford. And a guy by the name of Spence. Okay. Now. Spence had an impeccable record. Like he had 20 knockouts. He had 20 knockouts. And he had like 22. Like you know. He's, he basically never lost a fight. Okay. So is Terrence Crawford. Now. What's so interesting about this fight. Is if you would have seen the way Spence was fighting. He looked as if he had never fought a day in his life. Literally. Literally. He looked as if he had never fought a day in his life. The man got knocked down three times. Okay? The man got knocked down three times during this fight. He was completely defeated throughout this entire fight. Now, they interviewed him and he said um, that boy was high as a kite, LOL. He wasn't high. He wasn't high. He wasn't high. Um, and so he was in a real bad car accident a year ago. The car was going over 100 miles per hour and he flew out of the car going 100 miles an hour. So many people believe that um, the reason why he didn't perform well was because of that car accident. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. I had a very interesting dream about Spence. Now, I'm going to explain to you this dream that I had. In the dream, he was being interviewed. And when he was being interviewed, it was like he was talking, right? But then it was weird because he had tears rolling down his eyes. He was like in a sunken place, right? I don't know if you all have ever watched that movie, Get Out. That movie, Get Out, is a very deep and spiritual movie. Okay, that movie gives you a lot of revelation concerning what happens to um to people when they're under witchcraft manipulation. That's what that is. That's why Kanye West said he felt like he was in the sunken place because he literally was. You married the highest witch in Hollywood, Goofy. Of course you're gonna feel that way. Okay, it doesn't matter that the movie is disturbing. We don't care what you think. All right. The Hollywood gives us revelation concerning what the devil does. The devil hides everything in plain sight. And you know what else is disturbing? The fact that you made that comment and the fact that you're not walking in your God ordained purpose. That's disturbing to me. So keep your comments to yourself. You can actually learn a lot from these movies in Hollywood and it'll give you context on what's happening spiritually because the devil puts everything in your face in Jesus name. All right. And so this is what happened to Spence. Now, some of you might say, oh, um, you know, some of y'all might say, yeah, you, you don't know what you're talking about. That's fine. I could care less. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because, hold on. The reason why I'm saying this is because what I'm about to tell you might blow your mind. But God revealed to me that Terrence Crawford did a ritual. He did an actual ritual against Spence. Okay. And that. And, and so basically. Hold on. Because this getting on my nerve. Hold on. Um, I knew he was trolling. I knew he was trolling. That's why I removed him. Now. What was done to Spence was all spiritual. That's why he was disabled. 
the way he was when he was fighting. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because of witchcraft. Hold on one second. The reason why I'm saying this is because of witchcraft. Yeah, he was in a trance. He definitely was. He was in a trance. It was a very demonic attack. So let me give you all some more context, right? You can see it in his eyes. Oh, hey, you just exactly, exactly. You, I love what you just said. See, you have to have, you have to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It is a very God revealed to me that in order to get to that level, you have to do extremely wicked things. You have to do extremely wicked things, okay? And that's all I'm going to say about that. I will not go into detail concerning that at all. But everything is hidden right in your face, okay? Now, Muhammad Ali and George Foreman had a fight. Let me give you all some more context. Muhammad Ali and George Foreman had a fight. George Foreman said he was getting demonic attacks before he fought Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali wanted to fight in Africa because a ritual was done to George Foreman. It disabled him and that's why that fight was so weird. Okay, you all think that these people just got to this level just because no, it's a witchcraft attack. Spence was under witchcraft. Terrence Crawford belongs to the devil, period. You could say I'm crazy. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, because I serve Jesus Christ. He talks to me extremely clearly. Why would God give me a dream about Spence? I don't know him. I don't know anything about Spence. Okay, he was under demonic attack. The man couldn't even fight. I almost felt like crying, literally, because I know what witchcraft does. The th Yeah, the fight was very weird. Exactly. The fight was very weird. It was a demonic ritual done to Spence to disable him. It's not because he was brain damaged. There's nothing wrong with him. He was in that car accident because they would never even allow him to play if he wasn't 100%. He, they wouldn't allow him to play. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because... Hold on. The reason why I'm saying this is due to the fact that this is what witchcraft does. It paralyzes you. It paralyzes you. That's what witchcraft does. Witchcraft paralyzes you. Okay? And what it does is it strips you. Um, it strips you of everything. Literally. You, you are defeated in the realm of the spirit and in the natural. Oh, I know I'm not crazy. Oh, trust me. I know. I know. Um, Baby, listen to me. These people that's on here are so clueless. I don't even get offended. I just block them just because it's negativity and I don't want to deal with that. But I appreciate what you're saying. But yes, I know I'm not crazy. Um, And so, hold on one second. Let me remove this person. Um, and so this is another thing too. So another trick of the enemy, because I got another troll on here who commented and said, Terrence said he gives God all the glory. Do you know how many gods it is? Do you know how many gods that it is? Just because somebody I give all the glory to God. Do you know that the Hollywood elites considered the devil a God? You goofball for commenting that. You clueless, foolish generation for commenting such foolery. Do you know how many gods there is? Like, you don't even make sense at all. Literally. Okay? And so I say that because everybody says God. Everybody says God. It's a common thing to say. There are so many gods that people serve. So many gods that people serve. All right. And so I know people were going to laugh at what I was saying and saying, oh, he high on drugs. He this and he that. It is very sad that you think that poor of a top athlete, right, who literally takes his craft extremely serious. This man had an impeccable record. You think he going to do it? He going to come to a fight high. That makes no sense that you even think that. Do you know he said he felt completely off that night? When witchcraft is in place, you feel extremely off. You know something is wrong, but you can't understand it. You don't know what it is, but you know something ain't right. This is what happens, okay? This is what happens when witchcraft is attacking you. You know in your heart that things are not right. You being tormented in your dreams. George Foreman said he was tormented in his dreams before he fought Muhammad Ali. So what does that tell you? 
What do what does that tell you? Because I tell you all all the time, you must pay attention to your dreams. You must pay attention to your dreams. You have got to pay attention to your dreams. Your dreams give you intel on what the enemy is doing to you spiritually. I want to say that again. Your dreams give you intel on what the enemy is doing to you spiritually. That's what I want to tell you all. As a result of some of the witchcraft that has been done to many of you, you are tormented in the dream realm. Eating and having sex all the time in your dreams, poor quality of life, backwardness and cycles of defeat, job losses. I'm going to tell you all something else. This person just called me a false prophet. Um, Kevin Moore, I just decree 1 Corinthians 5 and 5, and you are literally blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and you are going to get a double portion of what you just sold in Jesus' name, just so you clear. All right, so backwardness and cycles of defeat, job loss. Um, people don't like to be around you, okay? People don't like to be around you. Now, I'm going to speak on that because um, one of the things, if you all read Job's story, if you read Job's story, then you know that in the book of Job, he went from being loved to being hated. He went from being loved to being hated. Okay. And they were spitting on him. He was being spit on in, in, in real life. So this man went from people bowing to him to actually spitting on him. Okay, codependent on deliverance from false ministries. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people that are under witchcraft attack, you are very codependent on people doing deliverance on you, specifically from false ministries. Okay, now seeing yourself being bitten and chased in your dreams. Seeing yourself being bitten and chased in your dreams. Many of you are being bit and chased in your dreams. People under witchcraft always attract the wrong churches. I'm going to run that back again. People that are under witchcraft attacks are always attached to the wrong churches. I'm going to say that again. People under witchcraft are always attracted to the wrong churches. And this is why... Hold on one second. And this is why many of you listen to 18 different people. This is why you listen to 18 different false ministers. And then I'm the 19th person that you listen to. And then you come on my platform. You so clueless. You confused. You offended. You mad. You angry. You all kind of stuff, right? And it's so funny to me because you still listen and you still stalk my platform, but you don't like anything that I'm doing. So bizarre so bizarre i digress all right people under witchcraft always attract the wrong churches i want to just say that a bunch of times because 95 percent of you are listening to leaders that openly do witchcraft because they put a smile on their face because they don't talk to you as direct as i do you like them over what i'm telling you <laughs> married to the wrong spouse I'm going to say that again. When you are under witchcraft attacks, you are always attracted to the wrong people and you always are going to marry the wrong spouse. There's no way possible that God is going to send you a man or woman of God when you are not living right yourself. That's not how that works. Depressed and severe anxiety attacks. Um, intrusive thoughts. Thinking about all of this demonic stuff, okay? You always think something is bad. Always. Um, you think that you think the worst of every situation. Those intrusive thoughts are coming from the enemy. Now, we going we going we going to really speak on this married to the wrong spouse. I get so much flack from I used to. Um, but I just I I ain't turning my plow. I'm not, I'm not going to turn my plow and I'm not going to come down off of what God has told me to reveal to his people. Um, I will never back down to anybody on social media. Comments and trolls don't do not move me. I'm from Chicago and I just seen 30 times worse than what you probably didn't ever seen wherever you from. 
okay and so with that being said don't none of y'all intimidate me i don't care about you not liking me i don't care if you want to follow me i'm going to give you the word of the lord every single time and i'm going to speak on being married to the wrong spouse because um hold on one second The reason why I'm speaking on this is because um, being married to the wrong spouse is more than 75% of the people um, that I've encountered, that I've prayed for. I've, I've only met maybe three different people where I've ministered to them and God was pleased with their union. And I'm just being honest. One of the things God always tell me is that they wrong, they're married to the wrong spouse. The person is abusive. The person is cheating on them all the time. And see, these people are not going to change. Um, and so the reason why this is important for me to speak on the married to the wrong spouse thing is because when you are under witchcraft, it's a cycle that you're in. I want you to understand that you are in a cycle of defeat. Okay, I want you to understand that you are in a cycle of defeat. Okay, I, you got to you got to understand this. Right. So if you're under witchcraft attacks, right, why would God be in the midst of everything that you're doing when basically you are working? Um, hold on. When you're working, when you say trying to take me out, who is she referring to? I just don't understand why these people comment the most silliest things. Um, but so being married to the wrong spouse is a sign that you are under witchcraft attack. The devil is also someone, um, a spirit that loves to pair you with the wrong spouse. I'm going to say that again, because your pastor, your illegitimate pastor that God does not honor or respect or love has lied to you and told you that because you're married, that the enemy is after your union. That's not true. The enemy is sitting back laughing at 90% of many of you. You're being cheated on all the time. Some of you I'm hearing are being abused physically um the man is taking your money a lot of you are splitting all your bills 50 50 you honestly think that the devil care about your union when you basically got a roommate that probably can't even have sex good you honestly think that that's like the devil mad at your bogus union the man don't even like god the man don't even go to church he watched football on sundays are you crazy grow up literally what is your relationship doing for the kingdom of God? You honestly think that the devil is after your, your, your marriage. The devil is crying, laughing, sitting back, busting up, laughing at some of y'all. Because y'all actually leave the house and think this. You actually, leave, you believe this in your mind. You actually think that this is, that the enemy is after your union. You're not even happy. You're not even pleased sexually. I know this for a fact. You're not even with the right spouse because how could you be pleased sexually with a man who won't stop cheating on you, who study who addicted to pornography? That's cheating right there. It doesn't make sense. And then you believe in your heart because your pastor told you that the devil hates marriage. No, he don't. The devil loves marriages. The devil loves to pair women, men who are extremely powerful with the wrong spouse because that can actually destroy you. If you marry to the wrong person, it can kill you. Look what happened to Samson. Duh. The man lost his vision in behind a woman. You got to grow up. You got to under, you got to, I want you all, I want that delusion to come up off of y'all. A lot of y'all are actually delusional and I'm not being funny, but you are. Your union is no threat to the kingdom of darkness. You are not glorifying God in your union. You all don't even hold hands and pray together. How in the world could your union be a threat for the kingdom of darkness? Your spouse don't even like you. Y'all don't even sleep in the same bed and then y'all splitting all the bills. You might as well get a roommate. It's a roommate, sis. That's not no man. Would no man make you split everything 50-50? I'm sorry. It's a roommate. That's what you got. You don't have a man. I said that. 
Okay, so you have to understand that a lot of you all, I want you to come out of this delusion. I want your spiritual eyes and ears to be open and enlightened because they are closed. According to Ephesians 1 and 18, the devil loves um, false unions. Let me remove this person. Don Russian, you, I'm not even going to comment because you're going to get what's due to you. Um. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, baby, they getting mad in these comments. Y'all are funny. Y'all love calling people a false prophet. Y'all love it. And you think it's going to offend me. It's not. Because you're actually blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Good luck with that. All right. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you all to wake up spiritually. That's what I want you to do. Oh, trust me. I'm going to keep telling the truth. That, that didn't press me. Not even this much. OK, um, and so I want you all to understand that the devil does like marriages. OK, they do. They stay mad. They do. Um, and the reason why he loves that is because he will love. Do you know what being in a bad marriage does? A bad marriage is draining. A marriage from the devil drains you. OK, a marriage from the devil can actually cause sickness in your body. Do you know how many women I've prayed for um, have all these breast issues, um, hormonal imbalances? I mean, they're really jacked up. They harbor all this unforgiveness. They have arthritis. Yes, it kills your spirit. It definitely does. It is extremely toxic. It is extremely, extremely damaging to your physical body. I was in one. I was in one. OK, and so when all of this is taking place in your life, how are you glorifying God? How how is your union helping the kingdom of God? So we got to come out of this whole reality of, oh, um, the devil hates marriages. No, he don't. No, he don't. He loves a lot of y'all unions because you glorifying him. Your, your husband can do a lot to you physically to drain you one thousand percent. His mannerism, the way his lack of care for you, the lack of not appreciating you, telling you he love you. Of course, that's draining. Why would you be with somebody who don't love you? That that right there is draining. Right. So absolutely. On top of the fact, many of you are married to men and they family members do witchcraft. There is over 100 women on here. Literally, I'm hearing as clear as day. There's over 100 women on here right now. You don't even get along with the in-laws. You don't even get along with the in-laws. The family don't even like you. They don't even like you. You don't even go over there. You feel very, um, it's like emotionally draining. They talk very bad. That's you and a whole bunch of other people. That's you and a whole bunch of, you think God would, that's what God's design is. You think God designed for you to be in a union with a man. You don't even get along with his family. That don't even make sense. How's that going to work long term? How is that going to work long term? I don't care what you say. If a family don't accept you, that hurts. That hurts. That don't feel good for you not to be able to get along with somebody's spouse. It does not feel good at all. Okay. You can say it don't hurt. You can say you can lie to yourself, but you're lying. Okay. It hurts. Yeah, it does. It does hurt. Because you're trying to figure out why don't they accept me? And what you have to understand is that it's a spiritual thing. That's not the spouse that God had for you. That is not the spouse that God had for you. I don't care what you say. Now, I will say that God can turn your union around 100% with prayer. And if this is something that God sees fit, he can turn the situation around. But are you willing to even do the necessary work that it takes to find out if this is what God design is for you or not? I prayed. I went on a fast and I think I've shared this before, but I'm going to share it again. I prayed. I went on a fast three different times. I kept asking God, God, should I leave this union? Should I leave this marriage? God, make it plain. Make it plain, God. That's what I was saying to God. Make it plain. Went to sleep that night. I saw my ex-husband in the realm of the spirit, right? Because I was in the dream realm. Two different weird dreams I had. One of the dreams I had, I was in the kitchen. I will never forget this. It was like an open vision. I was walking in the kitchen in my dream. 
in the dream, my husband turned around and looked at me. There's this specific look that my husband used to always do. It's like he had this devilish grin. I hated this grin. I'm I'm not lying. This grin used to send me to a river. Um, and he turned around with that grin. And you know what I told him in the dream? I said, get behind me, Satan. Went into another dream. He was having sex with another woman in a dream. Woke up out of that dream. You know what God told me? He said, this was going to happen if you stay in this marriage. Guess what happened? I was connected to a minister. She called herself an apostle, but she wasn't. Um, however, she had great gifts. That's what I will say. God used her too. You know what that woman told me? Now, I ain't get offended at her because I'm not jealous of other women. And she, baby, she had us stuff together. I'm talking about Gucci down. You know what I'm saying? Always. I mean, she used to look good. Okay. And me and her were talking. That, that woman looked me in my face. She said, you know, that's not your husband. And laughed and said, your real husband is somewhere out there. And she said, and you are sitting in this dead marriage. And she kept on talking. And she had a smirk on her face. And baby, when she said that, I, I was trying to hold back tears because I knew it resonated with my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that what she was saying was accurate. Okay. And so. Um, Hayward Jean, you are a lying deceiver. And I decree first Corinthians five and five over you in Jesus name. All right. So and the reason why I'm saying this is because um, I was married to somebody that the enemy sent to me. Because how many of us know that the enemy is in charge of marriages as well? How many of us know that when witchcraft is in attack, um, witchcraft is in play in your life, you are going to marry the wrong spouse? Just so we clear. Okay. And I think that I've shared my testimony with many of you. I've shared pieces of my testimony. Um, I share pieces of my testimony with many of you. And I believe I have told you all um, that God revealed to me who my, um, the man that I was married to, his family was very, very wicked. His mom. So my ex-husband's mom, she had a voodoo doll of me. I don't know if I shared this with you, but my son is, me and my son are very close. Okay. My son is 22. He'll be 23 this year. My son was praying and interceding for me. My son, my 22 year old son casted out a demon, a spirit of death out of my womb. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back in case you didn't hear. My 22 year old son, son cast out a spirit of death in my womb. Do you know when he, when he cast that spirit out in Jesus name, do you know my womb opened up? Do you know I actually felt it? Yeah. And and do you know what it you know what that spirit came from? His mom. His mom. The mom had a voodoo doll. God revealed to me how the voodoo doll looked. Do you know that I used to have um pay, aches and pains in my body? I used to have so many aches and pains in my body. It was crazy. All because of witchcraft. Literally. So when I tell you all that you can actually marry the wrong spouse, you definitely can. That's what I'm going to say about that. Because I definitely did. Right? My life was literally tormented. Literally, I, I was tormented. Um, the pains that I experienced in my life, I would not wish on anybody. I used to wake up in, in agony, literally, for a long time. Okay. I also had like a lot of unforgiveness towards, um, I had a lot of unforgiveness towards my spouse. So that was also, that's what I want to speak on too. I want to speak on the open doors. OK, it's very important that I speak on the open doors. OK, and the reason being is because the enemy had legal access to me because of the way I was living. So I wanted to say that. 
Okay, the enemy had legal access to me because of how I was living. I was living very bogus. And when I say that, I mean, I was not spending time with God. I was not fasting properly. I had a bunch of unforgiveness. I had a victim mentality because I thought that um, everything in my life was just going to um, change. And I thought that God was like a genie and that everything was going to magically just, you know, just change overnight. And it just never happened. And it's not going to happen like that because what you have to understand is that nobody is coming to save you. You have to follow Christ in order to get his attention. You have to follow him. How you follow him is by spending time with him. This is why I speak on this all the time. I speak on this all the time because I am a living witness to this. Okay. I'm a testimony for this. Um, and the reason why this is so important for you to understand is that you have open doors, which is why the enemy can attack you the way that he can. I want to say that again. You have open doors. If you marry the wrong spouse, you still can't harbor unforgiveness towards this person because this is the person that you chose. This is the man or woman that you chose. So now what you have to do is work on your heart. Because the devil has legal access to you. Everything that happens in the spirit, right, is legalistic. The devil is legalistic. I want to say that to you all so you can fully hear me. The devil is legalistic. So everything he does, um, there's going to be, he follows all these rules and guidelines. And what you have to understand is that when you are living a life that is not pleasing to God, he doesn't have to go to God concerning you. He could just attack you because he basically owns you. I hate to say it like that, but he does. Because you can't serve two masters. You either hate one or love the other. Okay. Many of you actually are serving the devil and you are unaware of it. I'm going to say that again. Many of you are serving him and unaware of it. And I'm going to clear it up for you so you will know if you're serving him or not. If you are not living a life that's pleasing to God, if you are not living in sin, if you are not openly fornicating, okay, if you are actually doing what God has called you to do, if you are spending time with God and the word on a daily and consistent basis, if you are meditating on scriptures, if you are fasting regularly, if you, these are, these are the things that any te anybody that is under Christ should be doing. So if you follow Christ, that's the way you should be living. If not, you're lukewarm and you're not saved. It's pure. It's no, it's no gray area. So I want to clear that up. When I speak on these open doors, a lot of you are being attacked by witchcraft greatly, severely. Many of you are tormented in your dreams. Many of you are being chased. I'm even hearing a lot of you have been bit in your dreams. Literally, you woke up with bite marks on you. Okay, and God is revealing that to me right now. Why is these things happening to you? The devil has legal access. The devil has legal ground to you because of the way that you live. The devil is allowing, I mean, God is allowing all of these things to happen to you to get your attention, but you're still not doing anything about it. You're still waiting on somebody to come for you. You're still waiting for deliverance. You're still begging people to del do deliverance on you. Many of you are paying for deliverance. Many of you are listening to people. You emailing people, you reaching out to people and God is saying, I'm right here. Literally. That's what God is saying to many of you. Many of you have more faith in your pastors and your leaders than you do God. I'm hearing that clear as day. You all have made an idol out of your church and your church has done nothing for you. I'm sorry, many of you go to churches and God is not even present. God is not even there. Nosebleeds are a big sign of witchcraft. Nosebleeds are a big sign of witchcraft. Please do not ever come on my TikTok and tell me to cover my head. Please do not ever come on my platform with that demonic doctrine. Do not ever come on my page and tell me to cover my head. I would never cover my head. My hair is my covering. Don't ever tell me that. Don't ever say that to me. 
All right. Um, so yeah, nosebleeds can death. My mother was under heavy witchcraft. Okay. Because I don't know if I explained this to many of you. Um, but, um, my stepdad was, um, a warlock. I think I've, I've, I've talked about this a lot and my mother was married to him. Okay. He was very, very wicked. My mother nose used to bleed all the time for no reason. It would bleed all the time. I've done deliverance on people and their nose was bleeding. But when I did deliverance on her, she had, she was a witch. So I did deliverance on a witch. Okay. She did a lot of witchcraft. She was a very wicked little girl. She was a young girl too, like early twenties. Okay. Um, and so she, she, I told her, I said, I, cause she emailed me. I mean, she, she messaged me and I told, her, I said, you a witch. And I, and I had her confess all the stuff that she had done. She had done a lot of stuff to people. Okay. And when I started casting out those demons in Jesus name, her nose was bleeding like crazy. Her nose was bleeding like crazy. Okay. Um, and the reason being is because of all the witchcraft she had done. So, yeah. Um, so nosebleeds can definitely be a big sign, especially if your, your nose is bleeding for no reason. See, many people just think that stuff just happening to them is not. Many of the times when you say, oh, I have an, I'm having an off day. I don't feel right. I used to have so many off days. And the reason why is because of witchcraft. That's why. You're being altered and controlled by demonic spirits. You're never going to feel right. You're never going to be right. You're going to have so many off days. It's not even funny. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of you all will say that. Um, a lot of you all will say that. You'll be like, oh, I feel off today. Yeah, you do. And it's witchcraft. A lot of you all have really demonic, tormenting dreams. And then, because God is even telling me. So there's somebody on here who eats in your dream regularly. And it has caused you to almost have like diarrhea. Who am I speaking to on here? It's almost like you got diarrhea. You saying yes as in me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. This is happening to a lot of you all. Father, we just, I just plead the blood of Jesus right now over this TikTok live. Um, I cancel accidents. I cancel every attack on this live right now. I don't know why I'm hearing accidents. I cancel tragic car accidents in the realm of the spirit and in the natural over every person on this live in Jesus name. I loose the blood of Jesus over your people. Father God, every person under the sound of my voice that is eaten in their dream. Holy Spirit revealed to me the spirits that are in operation. I'm hearing a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of sickness, and a spirit of backwardness. Holy Spirit, I just called out these demonic spirits that are attacking these people while and having them eat in their dreams. Father, you said that you've given me authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies harm your people. I decree that these spirits that are lodged in their stomach will come up and out. I call down the fire of God. God to destroy these these spirits that are in operation because I'm literally hearing that the spirits are in your stomach. We call down the fire of God right now in Jesus name. I call down the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God to destroy these demonic spirits in the realm of the spirit. I decree that these spirits will be tormented spiritually. I call forth my warring angels according to Psalms 91, 11 and 12 to destroy these spirits in Jesus name. We loose the blood of Jesus Christ over every person that have these spirits operating in them. I come against every demonic attack, all these spirits causing diarrhea, the spirit of sickness. I decree that you will have no effect in Jesus name. You all need to start fighting. You need to start fighting. You keep coughing. Yes. I decree right now that that demonic spirit come up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that you will lose your grip off of her in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that you will be tormented. I decree that you will drink the blood of Jesus and have no effect over her in Jesus name. 
la kamboya sa yimbrea la shanta ye kapala kumbrea la sinta la yimbrea la kandalia i decree that the blood of jesus christ is literally saturating every person's stomach as a result of you eating these demonic spirits in your dreams I literally, these, these demons are being tormented. That's why you crying. That's why you belching because they have to go in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus over this life in Jesus name. I cancel the attack of every witch on this life. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I decree that everything that you are doing, there is a reversal taking place in the realm of the spirit. I decree every witch on this live. I decree that you will give your life to Jesus Christ. I decree every, 1 Corinthians 5 and 5 over every witch. Yup, they go to numbers. Yup, drop up off of here in Jesus name. I decree right now 1 Corinthians 5 and 5 over every witch on this live in Jesus name i decree that you will give your life to christ yeah don't play with me yeah that reversal then already took place that's why them numbers went down i was at 669 it went down to 652 you're gonna have to find somebody else to play with you better get somebody else to do it because i ain't the one give your life to christ you wicked witches all right i just plead the blood of jesus you can't block my deliverance this coming from god the holy spirit you foolish to try to come against me or God. Out of your mind. They was trying to block my deliverance. That's not that that's not gonna work on me. I'm not no false prophet. You better find somebody, you better find you a false prophet to play with. <laughs> my answers are heard. <laughs> In Jesus' name. La Camboya Sate. They just I don't even know why they be playing with me. I don't understand why y'all so infatuated with me. Why are these witches so infatuated with me? You ain't got nothing else to do? So weird. Uh, but you all need to start fighting. You Don't tell me to stay focused. Don't tell me to stay focused. I don't know why these people be thinking they could tell me stuff. Don't tell me to stay focused. I'm not even, I'm not focused. Be quiet. Stop talking so much. Man, you can't correct me telling me to stay focused. Um, And so... The reason why I'm bringing out, okay, so listen. Hold on. Let me remove Michelle Walls. Let me move. Because, see, a lot of y'all, you you just, you try to fall fine, right? Stop trying to fall fine stuff in me. Okay? Just stop. Um, you said, sis, there's one in here to watch out for opposing as chosen. Sweetie, that's so many people that comment. <laughs> it's more than just one on here, but thank you. Um, I literally got chills in my legs as you was praying. I couldn't even move them. Wow. Um, Tika, you know, 301. I decree 1 Corinthians 5 and 5 over you in Jesus name. I decree every word curse that you are speaking right now that there is a reversal that is already taking place in the realm of the spirit. Don't ever come on my page and tell me that no blood is going to be on my hand. You wicked, fruitless witch. All right. Now, um, this is what I want to say about open doors because I feel like this needs to be said one more time. Um, you said as soon as you started praying, my mom stared, stared doing sage in our house. The demons are mad. I mean, that sage ain't gonna work. <laughs> but yeah, I feel you. Um and so yeah, so let let me just get back on let me let me let me just speak on something. The open doors. The open doors is very important. And the reason why I'm saying this is because the open doors gives the enemy um, access. All right. You said my eyes started to become clear when you prayed just then. Thank you. Wow. You're very welcome. That's that's really good. Um, and I even feel like I'm hearing God say that many of you feel lighter after I prayed. Can you attest to that? Can you attest to that? 
You are very welcome. Because some of you, okay, yes. Okay, good. Okay, I just wanted to clarify because the Holy Spirit was telling me that many of you feel lighter. Even your stomach. Some of you with stomach issues. This is what I want to say too. Let me speak on this. The You have to start fighting. You need to start fighting. Okay, you need to start fighting for yourself. Okay, you need to start fighting. And when I say fighting, I mean fighting with the word of God. Okay, fighting with the word of God. That spirit of sickness. Um, hold on one second. What's his name? Daniel. Um, there's a spirit of sickness over you, Daniel. I bind that spirit of sickness operating in Daniel right now in Jesus' name. I loose the blood of Jesus over Daniel's stomach right now. I decree that that spirit of sickness that is tormenting Daniel, I decree that that spirit will be tormented in the realm of the spirit. I decree that that spirit will drink the blood of Jesus. I decree that my angels of war are being dispatched according to Psalms 91, 11, and 12, and they will rip that spirit out of you. In in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over his stomach. I decree that he will no longer have diarrhea. I bind you, you spirit of sickness, and I loose the blood of Jesus over his stomach, over his intestines, over your gastrointestinal system. I'm hearing that right now in Jesus' name. I just call down the fire of God to destroy this spirit right now in Jesus' name. Um, but many of you need to really take this serious and you need to start fighting. You really need to start fighting for yourself. How you fight is using the word of God. You have to fight by using the word of God. You have got to take your authority in Christ. Okay. Luke 10 and 19 is a scripture that everyone on here, um, you are sweating. That is very good. Sweating crying all of those things are a sign of deliverance trust and believe me okay that spirit is why you sweating because that spirit starts shaking and i called your name out okay demons know what's up all right that's why my tiktoks be full of demons that's why people come on here they try to troll me because they think it's going to get me off it's not it, just, it does it that doesn't work anymore now last year when i first started doing ministry i was so new to everything i wasn't used to people being so negative i'm used to it now i laugh at it i don't care baby they talk about my lashes they say all type of crazy stuff i just block them okay what it is it's a it's a it's a trick the enemy don't y'all know the enemy do the same stuff the enemy does the same things right all they do is the same stuff. They come on here, they watch me, they report my TikTok lives, lying and saying I'm hateful. People call me rude. They Everybody doing the same foolishness. Meanwhile, life ain't progressed, not even a little bit. These witches that watch me, their life ain't progressed at all. In fact, their lives have gotten a lot worse because they're coming against a servant of God. You cannot come against a true servant of God. You can't. And I'm not trying to flex on here. But when I speak, there's authority that backs me. OK, just like the disciples in the Bible were given authority by Jesus Christ. OK, and the reason being is because everybody don't have authority just because a pastor is telling you that he a pastor that has a church does not mean he have authority. That's why y'all go to these churches and y'all tithe and so nothing changes. Nothing changes. It's never going to change because you are going to places where God is not there. Simple. Same thing with the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's the exact same thing. The disciples of Jesus Christ, they didn't have a church. They didn't have no church. They went and preached the gospel all over. Queen Mago, you do not have any authority, you witch. You need to give your life to Christ. Um, but yeah, just, cause, just because a person... Says that they have authority means nothing. Means nothing. You'll know if they have authority. You'll know it because things are going to change. You'll know when you're around a false prophet very easily. When you're around false prophets, it's very, very easy to know that you're around a false prophet. It's not difficult. You all need to read the book of Matthew. It explains it because when you're around a true servant of Jesus Christ, there's going to be a mass amount of fruit. You're going to be blessed as an account of them. Miraculous things are going to take place as an account of them. You're going to be blessed. 
So all of these people that are very popular with all this cloud on social media, why don't they post testimonies weekly? Hmm? Why your church, why your pastor ain't posting testimonies weekly like I do on a weekly basis? Huh? Why isn't that? Why isn't why isn't God doing the same things that he's doing for little old me, somebody who don't have a church? Make it make sense. A greater outpouring of his spirit is going to be bestowed upon me. He revealed that to me all the time. The fruit be super rotten. And they go to the same church. They cry at the same gospel songs. They take their dry um, family members who don't even want to be there. Right? They do the exact same things all the time. Let me block this person. Constantly asking me, do I celebrate holidays? You will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruit. So when you read Beware of a False Prophet, read that whole chapter. It's very powerful because false prophets don't produce fruit. They can they can do a few false miracles. A few, right? So they know how to shift some stuff. So they might pray for your arm and then the pain to come go to your knee. But you ain't finna get no. A false prophet can't produce money. False prophets can't, they're not, they don't have mantles of wealth given from them from God because they're false. They're getting all this stuff from the devil. This is why you go to these dead churches and your finances get worse. This is why you have all these demonic dreams concerning um, your pastor and then you still go to the church when God is actually warning you because I'm hearing that clear as day. Many of you have had dreams. You've seen your pastors in rivers. You've seen your pastors having sex. I'm hearing some of you have seen your pastors cursing people out in a dream. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Because you won't hear. You won't hear. You've actually seen your your pastor cursing people out in your dreams. Who am I talking to? Yes, me. That go one. That go another one. Okay. Yeah, you on here. Congratulations. You got a warning from God. You under a false leader. There's a lot of you on here, but you don't like the truth. That's why you get so angry. You do not like the truth. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. All right, you will know them by their fruit. So I just want to say that um, the open doors, very important. The open doors, very important. So I'm going to speak on that because I feel like I need to. There are many of you that need to repent for many things. Many of you um, need to repent. I'm hearing masturbation. Very, very, I'm talking about I hear masturbation is so loud on here from men and women that are on here. Jacqueline Foster, that's, I mean, yeah, they do that. It's not just my message. They do this with everybody. I've been, I've seen people TikToks and they'll ask me, is it positive or negative? That doesn't mean anything. That, I mean, y'all act like that's something. They do that. I've been on TikTok. And they'll say, do you find this TikTok? They do that on YouTube. That's a part of the algorithm. That's social media. There's no, there's no rhyme and a reason. Yeah, it just happens. It's, I mean, it's no big deal. And it doesn't matter what people say because God is going to place the people that should hear me. They're going to hear it. So even if people do that, I'm not on TikTok's algorithm. I'm, I'm on God's algorithm, right? So whoever God wants to hear my messages, he's going to make sure that I gravitate to that person and I hear it. So I don't trip on that. You see what I'm saying? So I don't even care, to be honest. Um, I don't care what people say. You could say that this content is negative. I could care less because God is back in everything that I do in Jesus name. So I don't even care. Yeah, divine appointment algorithm. Exactly. Exactly. If, if you need to stumble across me, trust me. Um, trust me. I don't care. <laughs> um, so let's speak on this, right? The open doors. The open doors. And just just really looking at it from um from God's perspective. So the people that I just told that had all those dreams about their pastors and stuff like that, you got to understand that you're getting warnings from God because God is warning you concerning these people. So it's up to you to pay attention and listen. Okay. And so, um, the open doors, when I say open doors, I'm talking about unconfessed, unrepentant sins. 
So I was hearing masturbation very loudly in the beginning. I was hearing lasciviousness very loud. Okay, speaking word curses, negligence. Okay, all of these things. Um, when you have dreams about your teeth falling out, it means you have no strength, you need your teeth. So, having dreams, I've done a very powerful TikTok on this, so you should actually watch it. So, if you have dreams where your teeth are falling out, that means you are spiritually you have no strength in the spirit realm, none. You, you on ground zero. If you can go from one to ten, you have negative one. Okay, so that's just what I want to say. Bye bye, Elton Mac. Go find you some business. All right, saying that, um, saying that I ain't gonna even repeat what you said. All right, um, so here's here's what I want to say too. You all need to start confessing your sins to God. Okay, now anytime I tell you all to start repenting, it people don't repent for that. Okay, but I keep hearing masturbation. I keep hearing it and I keep hearing. So I believe his name is Daniel. Okay, Daniel, I keep hearing masturbation. Don't know who you is, but there's a man on here by the name of Daniel. Okay, I keep hearing masturbation. I don't know if that's you or not, but there's a Daniel on here and you struggle with masturbation. Okay, so I'm just going to say that you need to repent. Literally, you need to repent. I don't know who you are, but you are on here and you need to repent for masturbation. There's a lot of you on here that need to repent for masturbation. Okay, you need to repent for masturbation. So who is going to be honest on here and say that is me? You repent for fornication. Yes, Anita. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chosen 177. Why are you laughing at everything? I don't What's so funny? Because I'm just studying saying you LOL and all this stuff. Like what's funny? This ain't funny. Call me out. Okay, I'm not call, I'm calling out a lot of y'all. I want you to repent for masturbation. And many of you need to repent for having a lying spirit because I hear that clear as day too. A lot of you all lie um, about stuff that you should not be um, lying about. And some of you have created such a habit of lying that you actually believe your lies. I'm literally hearing that. Some of you believe the lies that you tell. You need to repent for lying. Being a liar is not good. Yes, repent for lying. Yeah, because I'm starting to hear that many of you, you believe the lies that you tell. You believe the lies that you tell. I want you all to repent for eating and um, having sex in your dreams. Can we do that? Can everybody on here repent for fellowshipping with unclean spirits with um, um, in your dreams? Please, you need to repent for this stuff. These are spiritual laws that you have not followed. If you are having sex, if you are eating and kissing in your dreams, I need you to repent for fellowshipping with spirits. You were, felling, you were fellowshipping with an unclean spirit. You got to repent for that. You have to repent for that. No, 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 no. I, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I want you to type that out. Yes, thank you, Diamond, for actually saying it. I want you to repent for fellowshipping with an unclean spirit. You were, you were, you were having sex with a demon. Repent. Repent. I want the women and men on here who are struggling with masturbation. I need at least 10 of y'all to come forth. I need you to do this for me. I need you. God, come on now. God is waiting. God is waiting because I'm not going to get off this live. I need at least 10 people to keep it a buck on here. I need 10. Y'all playing with these roses. I need you to come on now. I need you to confess. I need you to confess. Danny, get out of my live. Talking about we under grace. We are, we, I want you out of my live, Danny. Bye. Bye. Can we be honest on here? There's a lot of sex toys. A lot of sex toys. You confess what? <laughs> Come on, man. Like, y'all, I don't know why. Now, now's the time for y'all to talk. Now is the time for you to be commenting. Thank you. I repent for masturbating. Thank you. Playing with vibrators. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need at least eight more people to be honest on this live. Like, just, yeah. The comments move fast. I can read fast, too. Yes, let's repent. Let's repent. 
there's a woman on here. You masturbate. You are so addicted to that rose that you even leave your kids unattended for hours. God is telling me that. You leave your kids unattended. Please understand that, that, that your sins are coming up. So God is revealing that to me. So you might not even comment. That's fine. But God sees it. You leaving your kids unattended. And you playing with this thing for a long time. You need to be honest. And you need to get rid of it. You need to get rid of it. Get rid of it. There's an addiction. You are addicted to this. To this toy. You are literally addicted to the toy. That's what I'm hearing. And you playing with this thing. You leaving your kids unattended for a very long time. Because you have small children. And you're doing this. You are on this life. Thank you all for being honest about the vibrators. I appreciate that. Definitely. Because I believe at least 10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for being honest. See, you're not going to make me out to be no lie. <laughs> you ain't going to do that because you're on the wrong life. You're on the wrong life. I know exactly what I'm hearing. I know exactly what God is telling me. I would love for this woman who I'm talking to, I would love for her to come forth because you are on here. And you have small children and you are playing with this thing for a long time. Leaving your kids unattended. So please understand, God is not pleased with what you're doing at all. And you being neg very negligent as a parent. You need to be honest with your ch with and, and to God. I want you all to repent for idolizing your leaders more than you do God. I want you all to repent for that. I'm not going to get off this live. I need at least 30 people to keep it real on this live. You all have put your leaders on a pedestal. You don't even you don't even acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Many of you have the gift of speaking in tongues. You don't even speak in tongues. You have this amazing gift. You have this God ordained gift. You have something that sinners, that people that are not, you have something that connects you to the Father and you don't even utilize it it is absolutely repulsive to me and that you put these illegitimate leaders on a pedestal and they don't even like you because if they liked you they would not keep they would keep it real with you they would tell you about the things that you are doing and what god is truly saying if a person really likes you they're gonna keep it real with you if a person likes you they're going to tell you the truth you like being lied to. That's why many of you have an issue with me. Because you don't like nobody telling you the truth. Because ain't nobody holding you accountable. But you will never come on my live and then I hear something from God and you think I'm not going to speak on it because I am. I'm definitely going to speak on it. Many of you go to your leaders before you even pray. Who am I talking to on here? How could you go to a leader before you pray to God? And these pastors have steered many of you wrong. Many of you are in bogus marriages as a result of listening to a pastor. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to on here? You in a bad marriage because the leader told you to marry that person. And you found out they was false. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Please respond. Because you on here. And you feel ashamed. You feel very ashamed. Me. Kim. Okay. Me, okay, okay, and see, you went to you went to the leader and you didn't even go to God. That's that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm not gonna say it's crazy because you know a lot of people are just not taught, and I feel like a lot of y'all think that it's like it's some type of magic formula with God. It's not a magic formula. All you need to do is actually start making an effort. That's all you need to do. You need to show God that you are serious. <laughs> there are some of you that follow me. God is telling me this clear as day. There are some of you that have been following me this entire year. You have not picked up your Bible. And you hear me say the same thing every week. Who am I talking to? Please comment. You have not picked up your Bible. You have been listening to me for almost this whole year. Who am I talking to on here? Me. Me. Okay. That's crazy. Donna. That's that's wild. 
That's wild. That's wild. All I talk about is the Bible. Literally. This whole year. You know we in August, right? We in, we in the month of August. Mm, mm, mm. You all need to really you, you need to repent for these things Because it does you no good to listen to me It does you no good to listen to me Because looking at me Ain't going to change your situation but, but God will You know what I'm saying Having a relationship with God Everything that I talk about How could you be listening to me All this entire year And not, and not felt any unction to, to pick up your Bible. You are extremely lukewarm. And many of you, the, every person that said me, I want you all to repeat out of your mouth. I want you all to type in the comments and out of your mouth, give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. I want you to rededicate your life to Christ. Please rededicate your life to Christ. Do it in the comments and say it out of your mouth. Rededicate your life to him, please. Because you, baby, that, yeah, you need to rededicate your life. Yes, I rededicate my life to Christ. That's good. At least 20 of y'all need to do that. Anybody that said that they've been listening to me since the beginning of this year and you have not picked up your Bible, I want you to rededicate your life to Christ. I want you to really take this serious. Because a lot of people... um a, a lot of people just believe that when you listen to me, like, you know, it, you just listening to anybody else. You're not. I know. And I know I don't have no fancy church, right? I know that, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't come on here like majority of these fake pastors do. Okay. I come on as I, I, I am. This is who I am for real. Like how I act on here, this is how I act in real life. I'm, I don't change up. I'm not a different person, right? And so with that being said, I believe that many of you think that it's sweet. It's not. It's actually bitter. And you're actually playing with fire. And you need to understand that, right? So if you're constantly listening to somebody tell you, you know you're not living right, God is taking notes of everything that you're, that you're doing. Just so we just so you understand that, right? That he's taking notes. I tell you all everything that heaven is transactional. Everything that you do, both good and evil, is recorded. I've told you all that plenty of times. We all fall short, don't got nothing to do, LaShonda, with what I'm talking about. Please, LaShonda, if you ain't gonna do nothing, get you some business and quickly. All right? Get you some business and get it quickly. I'm not talking to you. OK, and this is the problem with many, many people, because you think that the grace and we all fall short, just going to work all the time. It don't work like that. It, that's not how God works. OK, you are going to be held responsible for everything that you do in this earth realm. When you get to heaven and you go before God, he is not going to say we all fall short. So please stop. Please stop. Your life is going to testify against itself. The things that you did, both good and evil, is going to come up right before God. And you will not be able to lie to him because it's going to come up clear as day. So please stop with this. We all fall short. I know that. That's why his grace is sufficient. I'm talking to people that really want to get saved, though. I'm not talking to you. And so we, I don't, I don't pull this grace card with people. I don't tell you that. I want there to be some urgency, just like you got urgency when you looking for a man and you DMing him and you sending him them 16 page paragraphs when he didn't pick up his phone last night. I want you to have that same tenacity with God. I want you to have that same urgency in your spirit when your man don't pick up the phone. That's how I want you to be with God. But y'all don't have that type of tenacity. You ain't got that type of drive. Then when you come around me, oh, where do I start? I've never read the Bible. Where do I start? You start by reading. Pick pick it. 
It don't matter if you start in the Old or the New Testament. Why does there have to be so many directions when it comes to the things of God? You need so much babying when it comes to the things of God. You love to say that you're a babe in Christ and you're new to Christianity. I'm a babe too, if that's what we saying it. I just got saved two seconds ago. That don't mean nothing. God, God, God don't care about you just getting saved. Look at what he did for Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul had a road to Damascus experience and was on fire for God. He wasn't running around telling people, I just got saved. No, he wasn't. He, he was led by the Holy Spirit. Nikki Brown, we did not ask you for any suggestions. I did not ask you to suggest for anybody what they should do at all. And that's another thing that's wrong with people, right? You got these people that come on this on my TikTok, right? They don't got no fruit in their life. Always commenting, always talking. Now she should have commented concerning gluttony and repenting for that, but she didn't. Re she didn't repent for that, but she's giving suggestions for the Book of John. See, that's why I tell you all: you need to stay in your lane. Nobody asked you. Nobody asked you. Okay, nobody asked you. Um, but I'm going to get off of that. But this is why I say the commenting is just too much. If you, you need to comment when I tell you all to repent. That's when I want you all to flood the comments. Nobody needs no suggestion. There is no book of recommendation. The thing is, and what I'm trying to say is that people need to really take God serious. You need to really read the Bible. You need to actually just start. Stop asking, where do I start? And just do it. Give it your all. I talk about this all the time. You can give God 15 to 20 minutes of your day. Start there and then progress as time goes on. But you have to start. We got to get out of this habit of wanting everybody to coddle us and baby us. That's not how that works it doesn't work like that and especially if you join my lives all the time then you understand um you understand one thing if you all don't like me that's fine but there's three things that i always talk about meditation of god's word fasting and reading the bible that's one thing nobody could take from me i talk about that all the time literally Every live, I say that literally, <laughs> literally. So it's like you, you can say whatever you want to say about me. You can say, you don't like me. I'm rude. I'm this, I'm that. But you going one thing you're going to know, I'm going to talk about God. I'm going to talk about the Bible. I'm going to talk about meditating on God's word. I'm going to talk about fasting every time I talk to you, literally. Every time I do deliverance with people, what do I tell people? Any person I've done deliverance on, I tell them all the time that you must fast. You must take this serious. You must read the Bible. The same way Jesus, when he healed that man, what did he tell that man? He said, sin no more because something worse is going to happen to you. This is what Jesus told the man. Jesus told the man that why do you think Jesus would tell people after he healed them, sin no more? Because he knows, okay, how the spirit realm works. And what's going to happen to them is that seven more wicked is coming. You're going to be worse off than, than you were before. So you said, what does it mean if I'm an outcast everywhere I go and in every situation? So when I read this comment, God revealed to me that you have like a spirit of rejection on you. I don't know your real name because it said Ian Dot. What's your real name? What's your real name? The person that said Ian Dot. Natalie. Natalie, I want you to repent for being extremely lukewarm and playing a victim all the time. Can you do that for me? I want you to say it out your mouth and I want you to comment that for me. That's, that's what I want you to do. Um... 
Um, did she comment or no? I don't see. Um, you repent for being lukewarm. Okay. Okay. So I want you to repent for plant yes and plant a victim. Okay. I want you to repent because you feel very sorry for yourself, right? You have all of this unnecessary guilt. That's what I'm hearing. It's unnecessary. It's made up. I want you to repent for being extremely worried and being anxious. Do that for me. You repent. Okay. Father, we just lift up Natalie before you. Um, and I want you, I'm just hearing God say you need to rededicate your life to him. Um, because he doesn't really know you. So I want you to type that in the comments. I want you to rededicate your life to God in the comments and say it out loud. I don't see her comment. Father, I just lift up Natalie. Um, Lord, I rededicate. Okay, there we go. Lord, I rededicate my life to you. Amen. I just lift up Natalie um, right now before you. We just come against this spirit of rejection. I bind the spirit of rejection that literally torments her, that speaks to her in Jesus' name. You said in your word, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I bind the spirit of rejection in Natalie's life. I decree that that spirit will Will have no effect over her. I decree the spirit of rejection will no longer be able to speak to her. I decree that the angels of war are being dispatched and they are putting a muzzle over the spirit. I speak death, mental anguish, and torment to this demonic spirit of rejection. And I decree that you will no longer have any relationship with her, any ties to her in Jesus' name. I just loose the blood of Jesus Christ over her. I decree Ephesians 1 and 18 over her right now. I decree that her eyes will be open. Her spiritual eyes and ears will be open and enlightened in Jesus name. I decree the spirit of wisdom will come over Natalie. I decree that there will be a righteous indignation and boldness that comes over Natalie in Jesus name. A lot of you I'm hearing are really addicted to pornography, okay? And so I'm not going to sit on here all day, baby, because, uh, yeah, I'm just not. Um, but you all need to repent for watching pornography. Um, there are a lot of men on here. You watch a lot of seductive videos with women and it twerking. Who am I talking to? You watch a lot of seductive videos with women twerking. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Yeah, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. Chosen seven seven. I don't know what's up with you, but I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Chosen one seven seven seven. You are really on thin ice with me. And the next comment you make, I'm going to block you. I'm not even joking. You've been laughing and playing games. You know, matter of fact, yeah. I'm just not even gone. Yeah, because it's just ain't it ain't even worth it. Especially after what God just told me about you. Cause it's like you playing too many games. I let you slide, but nah. Uh-uh. Yeah, I know that she's been spamming the comments a lot. Yeah. She laughing. She's a witch though. Um so yeah, so the pornography, right? The pornography. Um, I will not get off into that. Uh just I'm just not. Um, but I will say that this is something that God has revealed to me. Um and that is something that you all need to repent for. All right. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to come back on here Wednesday and I'm going to do another teaching on this specifically uh, concerning witchcraft It's going to be a lot deeper than this, this teaching today. All right. I'm going to talk about the spirit realm um, and I'm going to ask the father to give me revelation concerning how deep to go with this conversation. But it is going to be a very powerful teaching. I am going to teach on witchcraft again on Wednesday. 
all right so please don't ask me what time put your notifications on and i will be midday okay i have a very busy schedule i do work a full-time oh well, i ain't got to explain myself just know wednesday midday right turn your notifications on and baby that's that all right i love you all you all be blessed be encouraged in jesus name we will talk very soon you are very welcome